Hello, I'm Antrisim, and welcome back to the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, a Finding Fantasy novel turned into a game. So, we have managed to sneak in so far. We've managed to pick up uh, a little bit of loot in the form of a Zangor's key. We're currently wearing some Orcish armor that's reduced our ability to move and fight and all that, which is annoying. And we've just rested up to get ourselves up to full health. Let's leave the room through the north door. Okay, let's walk straight on eastwards. We've got to find the ruby. We've got to get the ruby to Zangor. Um, this is tempting. There is a guard. We're going to continue eastwards. You hear strange mutterings and the clanking of what could be pots and pans. Whatever is in there, there are several of them. It's like a kitchen. Let's go through the door. We need to find out more information. And I'm an orc. I'm disguised as an orc. It's cool. You open the door into a large room. From your education, your positive used to be the dwarves' dining room. The orcs have destroyed most of the original stonework and repurposed it for their own needs. Sitting around a large table are five orcs, busily drinking and dribbling their bowls of rat gizzard soup. All are involved in a rowgy argument as to who will get to chew the rat bones left as the large in the large soup cauldron, so they do not see you enter. I fought orcs at before three at a time quite easily, but five? Use the disguise to walk past them. Oh god, it's test your luck. Right, so testing your luck again works like any other skill check, except that once you're done, your luck is decreased. Because eventually, your luck runs out. This is not going to be good. It needs to be an 8 or less. That, that'll do. That'll do. You make for convincing orc. You safely reach the eastern side of the room. Three doors are nearby, and the way out lies back on the other side of the room. Let's try the door to the south. A storeroom. Oh, we find some crude bowls, plates, and spoons. And then on a dresser, you find a leather case. I'll wager that case contains a bow of some description. Oh, definitely going to open it if that's what I think. The case opens easily. Inside, you find a magnificent bow and one silver arrow. An inscription on the case says, The giver of sleep to those who never can. Okay, so this is like a sleep arrow. But maybe it's for a special case. I should probably not use it. I want more arrows so that I can use normal arrows with the bow, but fine. Sure, I'll take them. It looks pretty nice. Put them in your pack and leave the storeroom. Oh, we get plus one luck. Ooh. Okay. Where now? Uh, let's go east. It's a kitchen. Okay. The door opens easily. You enter a humid chamber. The air is thick with the smell of unpleasant things being boiled in the large cauldron that hangs over a fire in the center of the room. The creature near a large cooking pot and a beast orc cook recognizes you immediately. Black sand! It roars. Its little goblin assistant nearby drops its spice jar in shock. Oh dear. Me and games, we have totally got a psychic link. Oh dear. Achievement unlocked Black Sand. Help Alexandra Black Sand meet an old friend. Thought you'd escape when you stole me purse and cat through straight air. Eh. The cook waddles closer, using its cleaver to slice the air. It took me four weeks to get back to Firetop Mountain from Port Black Sand. Four weeks! Perhaps the fresh air did you s Oh, that's me. Perhaps the fresh air did you some good, you reply dryly. Pustula me a cat ya yeah, a few new owls, and then me famous you really will be famous. Its little goblin hisses a few raspy chuckles, and they get ready to attack. Okay, fight the hawk cook. Whoopsie. You're attacking. In which case, I will do a quick jab. Oh, I should have gone for a piercing. That would have ended up a skill clash. 
I don't know what you were doing. I'm going to move. I, I forgot to look. I couldn't tell if you were wobbling or not, so I'm going to move. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go for a piercing strike because I think you're moving. Yeah! Vanquished! Right, let's move to here since you're moving. Are oh, you attacking? Right, let's attack back. Skill check, skill check. Nice. I think you're moving. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing this time. Ah, walking into me. That'll do. I lost two stamina, but we did gain some souls. You defeat the orc cook. The cook dead, you briefly tore the idea of tipping it into its own cooking pot. There is nothing in the cook's kitchen that you would even consider eating. Tip over the pot? Sure. I don't know why I did that, but it, it felt like a thing to do. With a mighty kick, you tip over the pot and the grotesque contents spill out on the floor. Some vile soup begins scolding the bodies of the dead orc and goblin. And identifiable ingredients are strewn around the floor. I'm glad they're unidentifiable, because if they were identifiable, I'd probably be a little bit more worried. Mm. That's me drinking, like, not the stew. Sorry, no, I wasn't drinking the stew. Nope. Mm. As you look at the soup in disgust, you notice a glint. There appears to be a shiny key in the remains of the soup. You take it. Why is there a key in the soup? Zagor's key. How many of these do I need? Maybe I should be, like, doing a lot more chancy things to find these keys. Leave the kitchen. Okay. I should be testing my luck with those keys a bit more. I mean, not literally testing my luck. I don't like doing that because it decreases. Let's go to the north. The door opens into a chilly larder. Most of the food being stored here is clearly for a more inhuman palate. However, you do find enough pieces of mold-free fruit and not too stale bread to make two meals worth of provisions. Ooh. This food reminds me of some of the fare that cheaper towns and port blo black sand dish up. Do I have, like, two meals listed now? I don't. Oh, provi no, there we go. Provision six. Right. I missed that before. So, that's our number of provisions that we can use when we rest. Okay, let's leave back to the west. That was a great idea. I'm glad we went in there. Right, let's go north. The passageway leads into a square dungeon chamber. There are two doors in the eastern wall and two in the western wall. On the opposite side of the room, another passageway leads north. The first door on the right is well used, and putting your ear to the keyhole, you listen and hear a man screaming for help from the inside. Before listening, uh, before deciding what to do next, you listen to the other doors as well. From behind the second door, you hear a thumping sound on the wood. Hello? Hello? Not funny! Open the door! The first door to the left is made of solid metal. Listening to the door, you hear the sound of tortured screams ah! coming from within. Putting your ear to the second door to the left, you hear nothing. The eye of the Cyclops is unlikely to be in a dungeon cell, but you never know. Oh, I guess I've got to find this ruby. Yeah. Okay. Second door on the left. It was empty. Oh, it was making a sound. Opening it, you find yourself at the threshold of an orc weapon store. A torch hangs from one wall, lighting up a small armory rack. Stocked with shields. Oh, okay, basically it's another armory. Cool. Oh! Oh, hello. That looks fancy. A circuit iron shield of gold crescent lies at the far end of the room. However, as you do not use a shield, it is worthless to you. Aww. Can I not, like, pick it up and use it? Let's search the room. There's nothing of value. Damn it. Let's go to the thumping room. That seems like a person who might be a lot more amenable. As he approaches the door, the bang gets louder and the bolt starts to shake. Come on, Gek. Let it out. Waking up. Sliding back to the rusty bolt and opening the door, you come face to face with a panic-looking goblin with a horrific creature closing in behind it. Slime beast! Slime beast, run! Squeaks the panic goblin and lashes out at you. Slime beast, slime beast, run? Is it telling me to run because of the slime beast? Or is it telling the slime beast that it should run? Because it lashes out at me. The toad-like slime beast joins in the fray, opening its w m mouth wide. It's full of long... Okay, fight the monsters. Cool. I don't like this. This is a very niche slot, and you're attacking. 
Oh, skill check. Oh, I'm more skilled than the slime beast, at least. You're attacking, so you must be attacking the goblin. Oh, you've got a two attack. Okay, that's worrying. Uh, I'm going to use a piercing strike. And then I'm going to attack the slime beast. Clashing time. Oh, it looks... It got a good roll. Oh, no, no, no. Ooh. You move. I attack. You're attacking. Provided I don't get in its two line, we're cool. You move back. I attack you. You die. You defeat the monsters. Initially, it looks like there's nothing of value in the slime beast cell. However, upon a second glance, you notice a blue candle sitting in the muck. Although it is an odd place for a candle, you decide to take it with you. It may come in handy when the dark areas of the mountain. You put it in your backpack. It's a blue candle! No, it's not, obviously, it's not just a candle. Why, why do I think that? Oh, yeah, this will come in handy. I might need it in a dark place. It's like, no, 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 it obviously has some sort of magic thing. It's a blue candle. It must be magic. Blue things are magical. We know this. Let's get the torture. The scream man might just right and blow my cover. At least the torch, you know, someone's going to be locked down. The door is not locked and opens. The room in front seems to be a small torture chamber with various torture devices around the walls. In the center of the room, two small hunched goblins are having their fiendish ways with a dwarf. Ooh. Ooh. Who is tied to a hook in the ceiling by wrists. The two hunchbacks are poking and cutting him viciously with their swords. The dwarf lets out a final scream before silent, eyes closed. His captors make disappointed noises and look around angrily at you, as if it were you whose fault the dwarf has collapsed. I can't let these goblins get away with such barbaric practices. Is the dwarf like dead or just unconscious? Like, I don't know. The two creatures give a loud shriek as you run forward to attack. Not too loud, I hope. Ready your weapon, you dive into battle. Fight the goblins. Oh, poor dwarfy. Poor dwarfy. Okay. You're attacking, you're attacking. Right, so I'm going to attack you. Skill check. You've rolled really well. I still won! Huzzah. I think you're moving. Like, no one's done a shudder. Yeah. You're attacking. You're attacking. Skill check. Goblin down. Ow! Okay, I thought you were doing your attack hit. Nah. Shouldn't have taken that for granted. Also, you didn't shudder, so I knew you'd move here. Piercing attack. There's no way you can dodge this. There we go. You defeat the goblins. You cut down the dwarf. With the last of his strength, he opens his eyes, looks at you, then looks downwards. His eyes close again, and this time he breathes his last. You gently rest the dead dwarf on the floor. I'm going to search the dwarf. You feel you have much time to search the dwarf before your presence will be noticed. All the goblins will be missing. Search his beard? That seems a little bit weird. But then again, maybe they've searched his tunic already. We should search his beard. You search through the dwarf's beard. You give a cry of surprise. The dwarf was hiding a small purse in his beard. You take the gold. Sadly, the dwarf won't be needing it anymore. Oh, three. No! I could have discovered more things. Okay, let's talk to the screaming man. You unbolt the door and swing it open. A nauseating stench hits your nostrils. Inside the room, the floor is covered with bones, rotting vegetation and slime. A wild-haired old man, clothed in rags, rushes at you screaming. Oh dear. His beard is long grey. He's waving an old wooden chair leg. Is he simply insane as he appears? Or is this some kind of trap? We'll try and calm him down. You start to shout, You are free! At the top of your voice, but you're swiftly cut off by a table leg to the face. Ow! That actually really hurt. In your disguise, the dirty old man thinks you are one of the orcs who must be holding him prisoner. There's no reasoning with a man in the state. Prepare for. Oh, god damn it. Right. Old man needs to die. Ah. 
done. But I've taken quite a lot of damage now. Down to two thirds health. You run the emaciated prisoner through the chest of your weapon as he rushes you. He crumbles to the filthy floor in an instant. If only you hadn't been wearing the disguise, perhaps you would not startle the lyrics man into such a desperate attack. Okay, leave the chamber. Exiting the dungeon, you hear the sound of water ahead of you and make a grilled portcullis at the end of the passageway. Before you can reach the portcullis, you will have to cross a bridge that passes over a gurgly of gurgling brackish water. You suspect it may actually be a sewer, judging by the smell arising from it. As you make your way towards the bridge, you pass a small creature, which appears even uglier than the orcs you've encountered. The goblin salutes smartly. Well, as smartly as a goblin can as you pass by, then returns to picking its boils. Zagos finds to leave the orc barracks in disguise. Oh, yeah. As you cross the bridge, you pass out of sight of the sentry post. Having had enough of looking and smelling like an orc, you discard your disguise. I get my skill back, at least. You arrive at the end of a passage. An iron portcullis blocks your way, and no amount of charging is going to budge it. Uh-oh. There are two levers. Right and left. Now, in theory, the one that opens the portcullis should be further away, because that way, the person on the other side can't, like, try and reach through and lift it. So I'm going to go over the one on the right. You hear a deep, rumbling noise, and the ground begins to shudder. Slowly and noisily, the portcullis rises into the ceiling. Woo! With hesitation, you walk towards the junction, listening carefully. Suddenly, a terrified young man runs into you. His white... Rune embroidered robes are torn and smudged with dirt. He looks at you, panic in his wild eyes. I yield! Education is not worth this much danger, no matter how great the reward. You calm the young student down and he begins to relax. My name is Ian the White. I am a humble acolyte seeking entry to the School of Solo Scholar Sorcery. You learn that he's gained entry but was deemed unworthy by the Elemental Masters. Hmm, I wonder if this fellow knows where the eye is located. I'll ask about the school to begin with. Just get him, you know, lowering his guard. You ask the young acolyte about the school of sorcery. It's highly prestigious. He sniffs. And highly dangerous. There are all sorts of magic traps to keep novices out. And even then, you must meet the approval of the elemental masters. Deciding to know more, you press for information about magical traps. Well, there's the hungry door just ahead. But I knew a trick to get through those. Simply say the words, dinner time, and they'll stop moving. Good information to know. I should really press him about the eye too before he runs away. You ask the young athlete if you know the whereabouts of the ruby you seek. He becomes frightened once more when you mention the name. Yes, I know the eye you seek. It belongs to the Cyclops himself who resides in what is left of the dwarven holes over to the east. Follow the passage, whatever you do, always make sure you're still heading east. There you will find it. Can I ask about Zagor or... Nope, he points down the passageway before pushing past and running off. There are goblins and uh, orcs that way. No, no, okay, yep, you're gonna die. You try to catch up with him, asking for information, but he darts on the portcullis you entered earlier. There's no point chasing back there. I should continue east to try and find the Cyclops. Ooh, I found a resting place. Right. Cautiously you creep across the passageway. After a short time, you reach a fork in the path with a path continuing northwards. East of you can see a broad stone bridge. Alright, he said go east, so we'll go east. But... We're going to rest. And we're not going to eat provisions because that raises our health by 10 instead of 5 and we only need 6. So we'll just sit and rest. Right, let's continue onwards. Oh, it didn't even give me a choice there. Okay. You follow a path to the east. Soon enough, you arrive in a broad but cracked stone bridge which leads to a yawning subterranean chasm. On the other side of the bridge, you can see a huge archway crafted to resemble a huge dwarven head. With no other options, you start to cross the bridge. No sooner have you taken a few steps and the floor begins to crumble. You break into a run to avoid the crumbling floor. Oh, it's a Lord of Rings moment. It's the, it's the mines of Moria. we got to run. Test your skill. I'm glad we've got rid of the uh, armor. You escape from the crumbling floor. Woo! With sigh relief, you can hear the masonry crashing down far below into the water. The sound vibrates around the cave, uh, the chamber, and you wonder what creatures you have stirred in the darkness beyond. Fall of a took. 
Let's look over the edge. What, what could be the harm? You crawl to the edge and peer down to the gloom. Your ears are just making up the sound of rushing water below. Somewhere far off, deep in the crevasse, you suddenly hear an earth-like howl, a wolf-like howl. Firetop Mountain seems full of strange surprises. Okay. Wolf-like howl? Okay. Get up and continue onwards. The carved dwarven head archway looms ahead, and you marvel at its construction. The previous inhabitants of Firetop Mountain were obviously once proud of their home, as shown in this high level of artistry. The features look like they could have been chiseled into the rock face in a style that could only be a dwarven design. I mean, it's a dwarf head. I, I'd assumed that much. Dwarves never seems to amaze me in their skill and artistry. Okay. What do we find inside? Lined with tall stone columns that stretch into darkness, intricately carved in the image of dwarven heroes of old. It's an entrance hall. Okay. The stonework is incredible. I can see each beard hair. Wow, I'm a bit of a dwarf fanboy, a fangirl, aren't I? About halfway down the hall, you notice the path that leads off the left, perhaps behind uh, behind one of the statues. Ooh. Uh, I probably shouldn't do it, but I'm going to take the westward path. I want to see what's down here. You reach the ruins of what looks like an ancient bridge spanning the crevasse. Long since collapsed, you just make out the other side on the far side. Oh god, uh, no, no, we're going to return back. You're not going to make it to the other side, so decide to head back to the Dwarven Hall. Maybe that's, uh, maybe we can activate something that, like, makes that a bridge later. Okay, continue northwards. What the hell? You're very tiny and you're standing on nothing. As you walk through the hall, you notice movement out of the corner of your eye. Something appears to be watching you. I have no time to trace strange creatures. I must find that eye. Leave the hall. Okay. You reach a junction with three different passageways. With each, uh, with east still in the forefront of your mind, there is only one option to take. Head east. You continue along the passageway, heading east. Soon you come across another junction. Head to the east, you see a wooden door. The other passageway continues to the north. Well, the passageway looks interesting. I need to keep pushing east. It looks like I'll be opening that wooden door. You head east to the wooden door. Trying it, the door opens and you enter a small room. Your eyes widen as you look around. See that the walls of the room are covered in ornate stonework. Mosaics and marble inlays give this room a kind of beauty you've never seen before. In the corner of the room is a large metal statue of a one-eyed creature. In its single eye is a sparkling jewel. Oh! Hello! That has to be the eye of the Cyclops. Kith did not give you advice on how to take the eye. You could perhaps prize it out and suck it with your sword. There's nothing else in the room. The only exit is the way you came in. I'm gonna try and take the jewel. You've gotta do it. You approach the statue cautiously. A scampering behind you makes the flash round, but it's only a rat. You feel at the jewel, but it's solidly in place. You try to prise it off as you work and hear an ominous creaking noise. To your horror, the statue is beginning to move. You jump down and draw your weapon. The iron cyclops cranes its head round towards you and steps down from the pedestal. There's only one way you're going to take your, uh, get your hands on that ruby. Battle the iron cyclops. Oh dear, it's made of metal and I have a sword. Drawing a weapon, you ready yourself for battle against a strange creature. Its ruby eye glints in the cave light as the animated statue twists its neck searching for you. The heavy iron footsteps ring through the cave floor as it approaches, first, slowly at first, but gaining speed, as though getting used to its new body. It raises both hands, flashing its forked tongue, ready to strike. Oh dear. Oh, that's a lot of health. Oh, that's a lot. That's a big... This is not good. And it's doing an attack. Piercing strike. Oh, we can attack everything in front of it. Okay, uh, normal attack. We've got the same skill. That worries me a lot. 
If I move, you're going to be able to hit me whatever I do. Skill check. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, we win. We win. Oh, it was going to be double sixes there for a moment. Okay, we got hit once. Just lost the one step. Oh, it didn't hit very hard. Whew. It raises both hands, flashing its forked tongue, ready to strike. And you've defeated the Iron Cyclops. You sit back and rest for the exhausting battle. Warily, you approach the statue. The jewel glints in the light, tempting you. Kith wasn't wrong. The eye is certainly a thing of beauty. You prize the jewel from the still statue, which is surprisingly heavy in your hand. You put it in your pack. Now to deliver this lovely ruby to Zagor. I'm still not sure what I need to do this, but I have trust. I, I have to trust Kith. Surely yet more fame and glory awaits me. I don't believe it. Oh dear. Claim the eye of the Cyclops as Alexandra of Black Sand. Let's examine the statue a little bit further. As you examine the statue, you notice that one of its breastplate sections is loose. When you open this, you are surprised to discover that it's empty. Huh. Okay. Let's head north. This looks interesting. You enter another room guarded by stone statues. The statue in this room looks like a fearsome dwarven warrior. Here's my concern. It might actually be like a dwarven warrior who just happens to be made of stone. We'll continue. There are two exits from the room. The door to the left sounds rather quiet, while the door to the right seems to have somebody talking behind it. I try need to try and reach Zagor quickly. The left door sounds more inviting. We're going to do the right door then. You try the handle, it turns and you enter the room. As you look around, you hear mischievous chattering. You see around to see two goblins leering at you. Before you have time to react, the two... Ah, oh, goddammit. I thought that I might like be paid off for doing something stupid. Instead, I did something stupid and what happened? Something stupid. They're both attacking. Okay, I might get hit. There we go. I got hit in a skill check. This is what happens when you've got two goblins. I think someone's moving, so I'm going to attack. Ah! Move here. Attack. Attack. Pissing strike. Right. You're attacking. So I'm just going to move to here. I think you're moving here. Can I have, have I got quick jab? Yeah, quick jab. Nice. It happens before movement, so it's really helpful. You defeated the goblins. A search of the room reveals nothing of any value, although an old box in the corner contains a wooden mallet and a stump of wood sharpened at one end. So good for killing vampires. Cool. Retrieve the mallet and stake from the old box, then stole them in your pack. You might find some use of these tools you explore deeper in the mountain. If nothing else of interest in the room, you decide to press on. Okay, cool. We exit the room. That might be useful. I'll take it. You carry on through the passageway and enter into another room of a similar size. This room is splendidly decorated with posh marble floor and rough walls. Oh, hello. And there are pictures of... This must be like the apprentice area. Ooh. There are a number of paintings hanging on the wall and a dwarven woman is staring at them intently, giggling madly. <laughs> her hair is unkempt and her clothes are ragged. Her eyes are sunken and tired as though she had not slept for weeks. At her feet are an assortment of strange trinkets, small bones, teeth, gold pieces, bits of half-eaten food and splintered pieces of wood. Some of the objects have been placed underneath various paintings. Master, master, look what Thomas has brought for you today, she murmurs. I'm going to look at the paintings. The paintings are portraits of men. Your spine shivers as you read the nameplate under the one to the west wall. It is that of Aldoran Zagor, the warlock. 
Out of nowhere, the dwarf begins to shriek with glee. <laughs> That's right, masters. Thomiela's guest. <laughs> yes, of course. You should make them comfortable. Sitting on the floor, the disheveled creature begins to rock back and forth laughing. <laughs> Something in this room has sent it quite mad. You have the feeling that you're being watched and notice the painting's piercing eyes following you as you move. You find yourself drawn towards his portrait and fear and your fear rises and you fear rises and your fear rises. Minus one skill. Oh dear. You must act quick. Flee the enchanted paintings or find a weapon in your pack to fight the warlock's power. What do I have in my pack? A candle! Hold up a jewel in front of the painting. Hit the painting with your weapon. That's too easy. Plunge a wooden stake into it. There are broken stakes around, so obviously that hasn't worked. I'm going to hold up the jewel. Kif told you to give the eye of the Cyclops to Zagot, and you would see what happens. This is a perfect time to try it out. You pull the great jewel from your pack and hold it up in front of the painting. Zagot's expression turns to a surprise, then fear. Then the painting swirls and becomes still. The power is gone and the painting is just a picture of an old man. Zagor fears the Eye of Cyclops. I think I now understand Kiss' plan. Plus two skill. Oh! Well, we're maxed out at ten though, so that's a shame. I was really hoping that would push our max skill up because eleven would be so OP. But sure. You leave the unnerving room full of paintings and a poor crazed dwarf. Just up the passageway, there was a small alcove in the rock. Ooh, resting place. Sure, we'll sit on the bench and rest. That seems like a great idea. You sit down on the bench and rest for a moment. Your aching muscles ease and your tirelessness, uh, your tiredness wanes. It is good to take a break on your adventure. And there's our plus five stamina. Nice. Well... We've managed to make it past the paintings. We've managed to get the eye. And I think we must be closing in on Zagor then. We've still got to meet that hungry, hungry door that we've got to say dinner time to. I think I've remembered what to say. It's dinner time. Uh, not lunch time, not breakfast. Dinner. But uh, I think we'll call it here for this episode. I've been Andrew Team. If you've enjoyed, uh, please remember to uh, like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the game so far down below. And also, if you've had any experience with like, fighting fantasy games, I'd be interested to hear if people like... Or watching this have actually played some of the books before like I don't know maybe for a lot of my audience the fighting fantasy books are kind of passe maybe they're they're old-fashioned and out of touch or whatever I don't know like I'm just interested to see if they're still like a thing for people or if you know you're like my age or older if you've played them or experiences with them because I've played probably quite a few of them uh but I I haven't played Warlock of Fight Up Mountain it's the one that always escaped me. Mainly I played them because every time we had a school book fair, because yes, we had a school book fair, I would just pick up another fight Finding Fantasy book because I was a nerd. And I am still a nerd. And I stand proudly by it. I am a proud geek, and I'm very happy of it. Until next time, stay shiny.